Janowski. Hi, I'm Jenna Albrecht. Hi, this is Sam Lee reporting from KGFW. Hi, my name is McCartney Larson. Hello, this is Kyler Ricky. Hi, my name is Danielle Palsy. This is Arthur Forrest reporting for KGFW. My name is Shauna Madison. My name is Louise Fogel. This is Todd Janowski. Hi, this is Daniel Paz. Reporting for KGFW Television. In this episode, we interviewed Mike Max, Mike Lynch, and Roger Erickson. We also interviewed a lot of other people. It sure was a lot of fun. Our first interview was from Brady Krieger from last summer. Take it away, Brady. Hi, I'm Brady Krieger, and I'm reporting for KGFW, and this is... This is Bud Melius from Winthrop. Are you proud of the Eagles this season? I am very proud for 30 years or more. But this team, the way they ended the season with four victories, I've never seen such wonderful games that they played to get into the regional playoff. What's your favorite memory from the game of baseball? I, I believe it goes way back to when I bought the first winter baseball team to the state tournament in 1956. I'm very proud of that one after all these years. My, uh, my best um, playing days were when we played in the old western Minnesota with uh, some people from, Gib I played with Gibbon back in 46 and 47 and 48 when I got out of the service. So then we played in one of these best baseball leagues in the state of Minnesota at that time. But the, the, my biggest thrill was taking Winthrop to the state tournament, the only time they ever been to a state tournament. Tournament. Who are some of the people that you played with over the well, years? Yeah. This is something. When I quit at Gibbon, we, I played with Winthrop. One of the favorite pitchers we had in Winthrop was George Cober, who was well known in the Winthrop area because he was one of the best pitchers I saw. We also had, at that time, we could hire ball players, so we had some of the national champion teams from Michigan one year. We, we could, we, at that time, you could. Uh, Pay, uh, pay so much a month, you're allowed to pay so much a month. And then we had some from the, the following year from the University of Oklahoma. And we had some of their star players I played with. And the winter people I played with those days and uh, was Kenny Swanson who played when I played for Winthrop, George Kober, uh, and Har Harrisburg before he got killed and Kurt Barfnick, who just died. So a lot of winter people we play, that played at that time. Then this goes way back. Can I predict the final score of the game? Well, I, I got to predict winter. Thanks for your interview. We'll catch up with you another time. And it was nice talking to you, Mr. Krieger. Now I know your dad's name and everything. Okay. Hi, I'm Brady Krieger, and this is? Dana Milius. What position do you play? I just help out. I coach. I'm getting too old. What's your favorite memory of playing ball? Uh, just the chance to play uh, with my sons on the roster. I got three sons, Andy, Ben, Billy on the roster. Has it been fun? It's been a ball. Went to baseball players? Jared Werner. Ben Millie. How has the season gone for you guys? I think it's gone pretty well towards the end. We started off a little slow, but we came up pretty big in the end. We've been having a lot of fun, though. Yeah, definitely. We had a rough patch through through the middle of the year, but the playoffs have been fun. Got together a winning streak, so it's been nice. It's been a good time. Today we are going to go stargazing with Mike Lynch of WCCO Radio. Let's go check it out. Take it away, Todd. <laughs> it's getting dark, so we'll turn the night shot on. Turn it on now. There, now you can see us better. Are we looking good now? I don't know. Do you have a tuxedo on? <laughs> Let's go see if Sam found anybody to talk to. Take it away, Sam. My name is McCartney Larson. 
Have you ever been stargazing before? Never. Never in your life. What do you think Mars is going to look like? Big and red. Have you ever seen any of the other constellations? Um, no. I don't even know what a constellation is. Let's go find out. And what's your name? I'm Travis Schweiss. Do you know what a constellation is? I think it's a group of stars. And that's about all I know I'm about. I'm not sure, but I think the Little Dipper or something like that's a constellation. I don't think I know what a constellation is. We'll keep looking. What's your name? Whoa! Okay, your name is Woo! Let's see what your master's name is. I'm Sue, this is Bunsen. Do you know what a constellation is? Well, I'm what is it? Exact definition, but it's a grouping of stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's certainly nice to be here, thank you. I am just amazed with this crowd. You know, if nothing else, we'll be able to go out there, make a big line across the field, and blow these clouds out of here. <laughs> it would have been nice, I suppose, if I brought Sid Hartman with this hot air. <laughs> we just listened to Mike Lynch talk about the constellations. Let's go see his telescopes. Use a mirror instead of a lens, and that gathers a light from whatever you're looking at and sends it back to uh, the other side of the telescope called a focal point. Now at the focal point, you have another little diagonal mirror. Tonight was a very interesting night. Tonight I met a dog named... Whoa! <laughs> Tonight, um, I got to look at the fire and stay warm some of the time. Tonight, we didn't exactly get to see the stars, only there are clouds in the way. But we did get to hear a lot about them, like the big bear, mom bear, whatever. And tonight was pretty fun. I liked the presentation with all the laser and when he did that whole, yeah. And today we got to meet Mike Lynch and I checked out his website. It was pretty cool and McCartney got freaked out from a raccoon. We didn't get to see any stars though and the telescopes were pretty neat to look through. Let's see, Todd, do you have any words to say? Not exactly, but... Um, I got to see some pretty big darn um, telescopes. They're bigger than me, though. Now let's see if we can ca catch up with Mike Lynch. Hi, Mom. We're number one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shauna Madison from... I'm reporting from Fort Ridgely. Today we are interviewing Mike Lynch from WCCR Radio Station. Well, hi there. How are you? Um, good. Did you enjoy seeing all the stars tonight? Ha, ha, ha. There wasn't any, but... But it was a good night, wasn't it? Yep. You learned something? A little bit. A little bit? Okay, well, that's good. That's probably about your age or so. I became interested in stars. Uh, I guess what really got me going, I grew up in the 1960s, and the space race was going on between the Russians and the Americans. Uh, the first landing on the moon. Probably the space race to the moon and everything what, that went around that that was going on around that time uh, really got me interested in the stars. But what really did it for me was that I went to a, a, a nature center once in 1971 where there was a guy down there with a telescope not unlike mine and I looked through it for the first time and I got so turned on that I, I, I built a telescope shortly after that and about two or three years later, I started teaching astronomy classes on my own. What is your favorite constellation? Well, that's hard to tell you. I, I guess it would have to be Orion the Hunter in the wintertime. It's such a magnificent constellation. But my second favorite is what I talked about tonight up near the Summer Triangle, uh, the little dolphin called Delphinus, Delphinus the dolphin. All it is is four little stars that make a diamond and another star. And it's one of the few constellations that actually looks like what it's supposed to be. It looks like a little jumping dolphin. Who was your role model when you were growing up? Oh, I don't know. I really watched the astronauts a lot. And uh, as far as uh, being on the radio, uh, this sounds kind of corny, but I listened to uh, Moon and Erickson and, 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 uh, and uh, Howard Viking and some of those. And I really looked up to those guys. But I really looked up to astronauts and, 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 and space heroes and the whole space program. I was really, really into that. Do you know we have Roger coming on the show? Well, that's terrific. You know, I met Roger for the very first time, uh, but I didn't know it was Roger Erickson. He was Bozo the Clown. 
uh, you know, a long, know, long time ago, <laughs> he had a TV show called Bozo the Clown. There were Bozo the Clowns everywhere in the USA, but he was the local Bozo the Clown. And that's when I first met him, but I didn't know who he was. So I, I've known Roger Erickson for a long, long time, and I got to work with him on the radio, too. And the nicest man in the world you could ever meet. Yeah. Thank you for the interview. Well, I'm glad you guys had a good time. We certainly had a big crowd here tonight, right? But yep. uh, next time, next time we'll leave the clouds at home, should we? We'll see a whole lot more. Now go make the stars your old friends now, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. We're in the van and we're going up and we're going to Arlington right about now. We're ready and we have the van packed and we're all ready and we're going to see Mike Max at his house this afternoon. <laughs> and we're also going to stop and visit the Mall of America. And we're in the Metropolitan area, waiting to interview Mike Max. Taylor will have McCartney Larson running the camera. Let's go see if he's home. This is Arthur Forrest reporting for KGFW, and this says... I'm Mike Max from WCCO Radio, and I grew up in Gaylord, Minnesota, in Sibley County as well, so it's great to be with you, Arthur. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, it's a nice day outside. It's the fall. It's one of my favorite times of the year because I love to duck and goose hunt. I was just in Sibley County, back home by Gaylord Duck Hunting recently, and it's football season, and it's baseball playoffs, and so if you like sports, and I should probably introduce, this is another Arthur. This is our Arthur that lives with us here in our, our house. This is our Bashan Arthur, and every time he sees a camera come out, he thinks that he's supposed to be on because he thinks that he's the star. What do you do for a living? I work for WCCO Radio. And I do some television work for some different places. Uh, and I have my own production company. I do some speaking. So I do a bunch of different things. But my main job is for WCCO Radio. And I host a talk show that I do that where I talk about sports at, uh, at night. If there's not a game on, I have my own uh, sports talk show on. Who do you think is going to win the World Series? Who do you think is going to win it? Yankees. How come? Because they won, they won a lot of the um, titles years ago and stuff. And they still have, like, a lot. They got, got a lot better since then, so they have the upper hand in the World Series, so. Yeah, but they might be out of pitching right now. They used Musina in Game 7, right? Andy Pettit can't throw on Saturday. Roger Clemens is out of gas. They brought in David Wells in relief. Mario Rivera can't hardly throw again on Saturday after throwing that many innings and that many pitches. So Florida's got a chance right away to get a lead on them, don't you think? They may be overrated, but Yankees can still come back, too. Okay, by the time this runs, I'm sure we'll already know uh, who wins. So I'll say the Marlins, you say the Yankees, okay? Okay. Like, all this, out of all the sports in Minnesota, what do you think is probably the best rivalry? Yeah, I'd say St. Thomas, St. John's. Like, whatever out of Minnesota sports. Uh, Minnesota sports, the best rivalry is the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Who is the first person you talk to on the radio? I started on television. I started working with Ralph John Fritz, who's from Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, not far from Gibbon and Fairfax, and went through a visit. Uh, and so I started working with him. And then I interview a whole bunch of different people every night. And, and the, the people that, are, you know, you might recognize some of the names of the big people, uh, like Michael Jordan or, mm -hmm. or Hank Aaron or Reggie Jackson. Uh, and then we do all the local players, so like Dante Culpepper and Kevin Garnett and. Uh, uh, people like that that you see every day, all the twins. We do a, a lot with the Minnesota Twins. When did you start on radio and TV? I started when I was in college as an intern. I was going to Hamlin University. I was a junior in college way back in 1986, before you were born. Now I'm Guess feeling so. old, Arthur. Now I'm feeling old. <laughs> and I'm, a lot, I'm a lot younger. Yeah. When were you born, Arthur? 94. Oh, you're young. Hey, young is better than older. That's right. Enjoy it while you're young. I will. Yeah. Who inspired you to do sports and stuff? Nobody really in particular, except I grew up playing sports at Gaylord. Before it was Sibley East, it was just Gaylord High School. And we used to play Winthrop and Fairfax and Gibbon all the time. We never lost to them, by the way. Who's your role model when you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up, I just, you know, my role models were my parents and my mom was a school nurse there. My dad was a teacher at one time in Gaylord. Um, and then I always liked the high school athletes when I was a young kid. I always used to watch them, and there were a lot of 
uh, real good ones at Gaylord, like Gene Zacco and Arlie Gregas and uh, Keith Dietz, who unfortunately passed away when he was in high school. And so when I was young, I used to watch them. And then I also like the pro athletes like uh, Fran Tarkington for the Vikings and Rod Carew for the Twins. And then as I get older now, then it changes. And, you know, one of my role models in my business is Sid Hartman, who writes the the article for the Star Tribune and does radio because he works so hard. And he's 83 years old, and he still works so hard. So he's one of my role models now. Thanks for the interview, Mike. Where are you going to go now? All of America. You are? What are you going to buy? Probably a jersey. All right. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's always great to spend time with the greatest people in the world from Sibley County. Okay. This is McCartney Larson reporting from the Mall of America, and this is Laurie Milbrand. What are the chances we bump into you today? Very slim. Hey, aren't you the cook in GFW? Yes, I am. Any good deal shopping today? Yeah, we got some. Thanks for the interview, and uh, we'll talk to you at school. Bye. Bye. This is Arthur Force recording for KGFW, and we're in the Mall of America right now, and we b- and we met. Patty McCarthy, just here doing a little shopping. McCartney picked the Packers, the Packers store in there. It's the worst store in the entire mall. Let's go look at some different stores. Not this one again. Hi, I've gotten business cards from everywhere, and this is where I really wanted to go, the Disney store. We're above Camp Snoopy in Lego World right now. This is McCartney. This is Arthur. And we're signing off in the Mall of America. Hi, my name is Shannon Madison, and we're reporting for Downtown Gibbon. Today we are going to interview Roger Erickson at Gallagher's Cafe. Here we are at Gallagher's Cafe and Quilt Shop. Let's see if we could find Roger. They even got a sign welcoming KGFW and Roger Erickson. Now we're going to in- be interviewing. I'm Dennis. And I'm Rita. Tell us a little bit about Gallagher's. Uh, we started the store about five years ago. It was Rita's bright idea. At least that's what she thought at the time. Uh, it was an old building and we redid it and now we uh, eat here. And Rita lives here practically the whole time. And we sell fabric and gift items. What's your favorite part about owning the cafe? I don't have to cook anymore. <laughs> they cook for me. Let's see if our guest has arrived. Hi, my name is Shauna Madison, and I am interviewing... Oh, I'm Roger Erickson. ...of WCCO Radio. Roger, where did you grow up as a kid? Well, I grew up just east of here. I can't remember the name of the town. Is it, is it Winthrop? I, th- I think that was it. Yeah, Winthrop. Yeah. Uh, and we always used to fight with Gibbon. We played baseball and everything. But we like Gibbon. What inspired you to work with radio? Uh, when, I was a, uh, when I was a kid, I'd listen to WCCO, and I'd hear a guy named Cedric Adams and another one named Bob DeHaven. They were big radio stars back at that time, and I thought, boy, that would be kind of fun to do radio, but I didn't know that I'd ever do it or not, but as it turned out, it worked out okay. Who was your role model when you were a kid? It would be... It would be it would be those guys. I, I liked the way Cedric Adams could communicate with the listener. He was back when announcers were pretty kind of stiff sounding, WCCO, Minneapolis, St. Paul. He was talking just kind of like an ordinary guy and he'd read the news like an ordinary guy would. And he was getting through to people. And I just, I just admired the way he could announce. What is your favorite Christmas meal? <laughs> well, not Ludafisk, <laughs> although we had a lot of that. Uh, for those with any kind of a Scandinavian background, they have heard about that. But uh, my, favorite, my favorite meal, my mom made Swedish meatballs. Oh, they were good with uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and cranberries 
and then end up with pumpkin pie. Oh, that's good. Where did you receive an education? Well, first in uh, Winthrop School, and then I went to the University of uh, Minnesota. My brother and I roomed together. When I went to the university, I, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I always had in the back of my mind I'd like to do something with speech. I thought of becoming a speech teacher and teach English. And that's what I originally thought I would do at the university because I didn't think I had a chance to ever get into radio because it was very competitive. And then I, while I was at the university, I, I started working at the university radio station. And that piqued my interest and that's how it happened. How did you become Bozo the Clown? Bozo the Clown. I, my first job on radio was in Stillwater, Minnesota. And it was a radio station there that's still going, WAVN. And I was there for eight years, but I always wanted to get to WCCO radio because, as I said before, I remember listening to that station, and boy, if I could get there. And also, it had enough power that my parents could listen in Winthrop. When I worked at Stillwater, they couldn't hear me. Dad sometimes would go out into the car and listen in the car radio when it sat in the garage, believe it or not, by fine-tuning the dial, he could pick me up in Stillwater from Winthrop. But that's the only place he could because in the, in the house would be too much interference in electrical. And that was my very first job. Well, then I wanted to get the WCCO and I'd go there and audition and they'd say, well, Roger, you're not ready for WCCO yet. Then a couple of years later, I'd audition again. Well, keep working at it, but you, you know. And then I heard about the auditioning for Bozo the Clown at WCCO Television. And I thought, maybe that'll be how I find my way to WCCO. And there were Bozo the Clown records at the time. And I took a week off vacation. I went and listened to those records over and over again. Then I had a tape recorder. And I'd listen to, my, I'd listen to the records and I'd Im imitate Bozo's voice. Well, hello, this is Bozo the Clown. <laughs> and I'd do all those. And then I'd listen to myself on tape. Well, that's not quite close enough. So I'd try it again. Well, hello there. And I'd look into the, oh, this is Bozo the Clown. He sometimes crosses his eyes. Hello there, I'm Bozo the Clown. <laughs> and I'd, I would practice and practice. And then I went for the, then I went for the audition. And by golly, I got it. I can't believe it. And then that got me to WCCO television, and pretty soon WCCO radio needed an announcer, and I just slept over there. What is the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? Uh, when I was on, I mentioned that I was on uh, the university radio station. I interviewed one time somebody who had something to do with WHO, the World Health Organization. Now, when I was in school, this was a big deal. It was for the UN, but it was the, it was really new. And he was, I was interviewing him, and he's telling me what they did. And he said, we went into this someplace in some part of the world, I can't remember where, and where they had a lot of malaria because of the mosquitoes, we eradicated most of the mosquitoes, got rid of most of them, and malaria was down considerably. All the time, now mind you, they had taught me in radio, don't always just, just think of what you're going to ask. Listen to the person who's interviewing, you're interviewing, because that might make for another question. But don't, you, you've got to listen to the other person that you're interviewing, like, as you've been doing all the time, which I admire. So I, but I didn't do that. I had this bunch of questions and I would say, and he would say, I worked in this part and got rid of a lot of mosquitoes. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And then I'd go to the next question. And, he, and then he continued to say, and my wife and I worked together for many years. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. And he said, but of course my wife died last year. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. I wasn't listening to him. And it was very embarrassing. And it was live on radio, believe it or not. That taught me a lesson.
from then on when I interviewed somebody, I'd always have these questions and I'd have them written it down and, and I knew what I wanted, just as you're doing, knew what I wanted to ask, but I'd always keep in my mind that got to listen to that might uh, pursue, uh, you might get, have another question as a result of that. What year were you chosen to be in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame? Uh, well, they made the mistake and put me in two years ago. I was lucky. Um, <laughs> when was the first time you were on the air? First time on the air uh, for a besides KUOM, which was an educational station at the university, was in Stillwater, and my very first time on the air, and I was very nervous. When my first time on the air on WCCO, then I was really nervous. They put me on in the evening, and I had to make an announcement to introduce Cedric Adams, the man that I admired so much because I worked in the evening, and I say, now here is the Cedric Adam News, brought to you by whatever the sponsor was. I was so nervous that I would blow it because they'd think, well, this guy, he hasn't had enough experience yet. I was nervous that I was going to say the wrong thing. And I actually, I perspired so much I was wringing wet. You can't imagine that you can get to that stage, but I was. But I got through, I got through it. But then I was fine after that. I have one more item he was hoping you could answer. The Ludafisk Lament. Uh-huh. And you want to know how it happened? Okay. Actually, there was, a, there was a guy who worked for American Hardware Mutual. He sent us this poem, The Ludafisk Lament. And Charlie and I decided that would sound pretty good on the air. And so we did it with some music behind. It's about this Swede who hated Ludafisk. And there are lots of Swedes and Norwegians and Danes who hate Ludafisk. But they have it every Christmas anyway because their parents had it and their grandparents had it for them and it was kind of traditional at Christmas time for Scandinavians. And this is about the poor guy who hated Ludafisk. And he goes, uh, uh, Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house. And then he tells about how terrible the odor came stealing from the Ludafisk. And it was so powerful, it, the, the paper on the wall had flowers, and they wilted. It was, it was terrible. But eventually he ate it, and, it, and then he realized it's just something you have to go through every Christmas to be a good Scandinavian boy. And then we decided to put it on record. And it worked out fine. It, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ludafist Lament. And it became uh, very popular through our area and, and many other areas. For instance, in, uh, in Seattle, out there, it sold just a lot of record, uh, records out in the Seattle area. So it kind of surprised us. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say to the folks back home? Yeah, I would. I, I just think it's so great what, what GFW is doing, especially with KGFW-TV. I just think this is marvelous. And I think my uh, home area is in good hands with the school system. Doing things like this, which teach so much for uh, handling yourself and for meeting others and for developing questions and getting into the interview and it, it's helpful in many ways and I wish you the very best of luck and all of your people who work in this okay thank you for your interview thank you thanks for watching KGFW episode 8